We've got the Toastmasters here. We've got Emily, Denise, guest speaker, Sandra, Mel, Alan, I think that's everybody, and then, and Lisa. Years, years ago, I was on uh, this reality show, The Ultimate Fighter, and we were stuck in the house. We didn't have TV. We didn't have uh, books to read. It was kind of, they wanted us to do crazy, they, they wanted us to act out and make good TV. I thankfully had a great coach, Uriah Faber, who got me into real estate, but was also uh, always on the, the leading edge of, of, of everything, uh, personal development. And he had us doing Toastmasters. I didn't know what Toastmasters was. I thought, and, and the way he explained it, it's a secret society of speakers. <laughs> People, they get up there and they speak and they speak well and you don't know who could be a Toastmaster. He was like, he was like, these incredible speakers, they don't, they, they're Toastmasters, you just don't know it. Oh, and no. he would have us take topics, we'd get up there and, the, you know, in the beginning we were kind of new to the whole process there were cameras on us filming and we'd have to get up there and we'd have to speak about topics that we didn't uh, most of the time know anything about got up there got nervous you were sitting there like you didn't want to get called and it was all right you're up we'd get up there and we'd speak and he would he had his criteria that he judged us on fill pauses and and stuff like that and i always like wanted to do it again but never really had a structure. We've been doing it here in the office a little bit, getting up and just speaking, getting uncomfortable, getting through it. And it, for, for real estate agents, huge. Going into a listing appointment, you're uncomfortable, you're, you know, things, things come up and you have to think on the fly and you have to you know, really sell yourself. For fighters, get, you get that mic after the fight, you win a big fight, you gotta, you gotta sell yourself social media, everything. Speaking well is just so important. It's something that I'm always looking to improve and I'm very thankful to have the real Toastmasters <laughs> organization down here today. Give it up for them. Yeah. <laughs> the Toastmasters say we hand off formally. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Welcome today. Can I be heard all the way at the end? Yes. Is it okay. Oh, good. This is something I've been working on at Toastmasters. It's becoming louder. Al, thank you so much for having us here today. I love that we are bringing together the sales aspect, and also if there's a house that needs to be sold, please take care of business first. I love that we're bringing that together with fighting and that this secret society of Toastmasters is yeah. rude. I had no idea. I hope that we're not that secret. I am the club growth director for our district. Our district is south side of 34th Street, Manhattan, all the way down, Brooklyn, Queens, all the way to the end of Long Island. And we don't want to be secret. We want people to know that we're out here. I think that Toastmasters should be something that everybody takes part in because once you start, you see where you're at and you get better. If you put the time in, you get better. It is like building a muscle. We all have a public speaking muscle in us. And working on it here in this gym that doesn't look like a gym, you'll get better and stronger and more confident. And if you're interested in leadership, you'll get better as a leader. If you're just interested in focusing on public speaking, you will get better at that. And we do have a good program today. We want it to be interactive. We want you to enjoy yourself, to feel free to express yourself. We will have you take part in various aspects of it. The first thing we expect you to do is to clap before and after everyone who <laughs> speaks. We want to make it a welcoming, safe, and supportive environment. And clapping for people is one way to do that. And we have an agenda that is broken up into three parts. First part is a prepared speech that you will hear and that is the hallmark of Toastmasters. It's about doing speeches. Even if you think you would never give a speech, we are all doing presentations. We're all selling ourselves, in some cases selling houses, hopefully. And you have to be able to present, even if you're not doing a formal speech. The second part of our agenda is table topics that Al talked about. The secret questions that you don't know are coming, and you come up and you speak for one to two minutes. And we're going to see how well you do. You're going to do much better than you thought. I told people yesterday my first table topics question, I think I answered it in seven words. 
You're supposed to speak for a minute. I spoke for way less than a minute <laughs> and still survived. And I sat down and thought about, oh, here's what I would have done differently. And that moment you sit down and you are reenacting and reliving what you did, that's thinking like a Toastmaster. You're already being really proactive and excited about the future. Like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this again, but I thought I was going to die when I did it, and you didn't. <laughs> so we're going to see how you do with that. And then the third part is evaluations. We all want to hear how we do, how we can do better, and peers in Toastmasters are going to be your coaches, your mentors who are helping you to get better from where you are. So we will hear from them at the end. <clears throat> to start with, I'm going to introduce the people who will help make this meeting happen today. We have a grammarian and awe counter. And that is Melvin Garlic. Please welcome Melvin to the front. And Melvin. Thank you. I should have been as diligent as uh, Emily did. She wore her, her name tag, and I forgot mine. I'm the district director for 119. So I am the number one guy for the whole district. And I am your grammarian all counter today. And what you need to expect from me as the grammarian is my responsibility to pay close attention to all the speakers that come up here. Listen carefully to the language uses. I will take note of improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As grammarian, it is my duty also to give you the word of the day. And the word of today is gravitate. To move towards towards and, and attract to or towards somebody. I'll give it to you in a sentence. Many young people now gravitate towards careers on social media. Also, as your all counter, and I'm stretching my listening skills today, the purpose of the all counter is to note words and sounds that use that you use as crutches or pause fillers by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen to overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know. I will also listen to filler sounds, including ahs, ums, and ers. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, <clears throat> this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used filler words. And the purpose of that is so when we speak in front of an audience and we lose track of what, we can't think of what we're going to say, and instead of using a filler word, I will encourage you to pause, think about what you say, and then speak again. This will improve your speaking skills and listening skills. So thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Melvin. And you're not in trouble if we catch you using an um or an ah uh or a like. That's just an opportunity to get better. We're not going to make you do push-ups or anything like that. Maybe Al. <laughs> yeah, push-ups. Who else is safe? And we have a timer because we all want to make sure we're not taking over the room was saying too much. So our timer of the day, it says group, it is actually Denise, one of two Denises in the room. Denise, can you please come and explain your role? Yeah, Denise. They call me group because it's a secret society and nobody's supposed to know. Ash is giving it away. Timing is important, as Emily said. If you are doing public relations or even if you are showing a house, if you're expected to speak, to say whatever you have to say in five minutes, and you say it in ten, well, now you've taken over someone else's time. If you say it in two, there's this great loss of empty space that needs to be felt. Timing. Speeches are five to seven minutes. At the five minute mark, I will put up the green. At the six minute mark, yellow. At the seven minute mark, red. We always just hold up the red until you're done speaking. No one in Toastmasters ever like pulls you off. <laughs> but it is your, it, you should be wrapping up. Uh, table topics, which you all will be taking a part of. One minute green. Try to speak until you see the green. One and a half minutes yellow. Two minutes red. Again, we will keep it up. And the evaluation is two minutes, 
two and a half minutes, three minutes. And I will keep track of the timing and report it at the end. Thank you. And Denise is actually wrong. There are some clubs that are that mean that they will <laughs> mute you if you go right over a second beyond what you need to. We're going to be very nice today. <laughs> now we are going to hear from our prepared speaker. Sandra Albanese is speaking today. You will see on the agenda, it says DTM after her name. I'm not says, a DTM. Oh, you're not a DTM. No, She's not yet. almost DTM. Working on it. You? Working on it. You're close to it. Oh, I don't know. What do they have now? The, the, the Something five. Designations oh. are so She's on her way to wonky now. <laughs> a DTM. DTM it means Distinguished Toastmaster in Toastmaster land. Not our secret mo <laughs> moniker. It really is our PhD of Boost Mastery. It means we've achieved a certain level of speaking prowess. For Sandra, she's on her way to doing that. We have something called Pathways. It's our education module. Once you finish a certain number of speeches, you'll get level one completed, then level two, level three. Once you complete a couple of those, plus some other projects, then you become a distinguished Toastmaster. Sandra is here to take steps forward on getting to there. Sandra is speaking from the Motivational Strategies Pathway. Her objective today is to inspire the audience. No small feat. She will speak for five to seven minutes. We will see Denise with her timing cards. And her speech title today is Be Brave, Be Very Brave. Please, let's welcome Sandra Albany. Sandra! Yeah! Picture with me a burning building and a firefighter with a hose spraying water on the burning building and a comrade behind. These are heroes and they are brave. Now picture out on the desert a soldier with all the gear, camouflage, light brown, helmet, marching across. This is another hero, and they are brave. Now, unless you are a firefighter, or a soldier, you may never reach that level of heroism or bravery. I know I won't. But we are all able to reach a level of bravery and heroism in our life. Madam Toastmaster, guests. Another scene. A mom, a dad, and a young girl, maybe about 10, 11 years old, on a Christmas card in their room, in their living room, behind them a twinkling Christmas tree. Now the mom and dad are my sister and her husband, and the little girl is my niece, Christine. My sister Susan and her husband Charles and Christine won Christmas. Now I'm going to tell you my sister Susan is the bravest mom I've ever met. When my niece Christine was 13 years old, she suffered from anorexia. Down to 79 pounds, we almost lost her. My sister Susan struggled to find a program in New Jersey to, that would take her. It's hard. At 13 years old, they don't have programs. She searched high and low across the country and found a program in Utah that would treat her. But she had to send her 700 miles away. Her 13-year-old daughter. That's bravery to make that decision. How do you do it? You have to call a teen 
escort service to take your child screaming and crying out of your house. Be brave. Be very brave. That's the heroism that we have to face ourselves on a daily basis. I look up to her. She's brave. How do we ourselves be brave? About eight years ago, I was at a career building seminar. And I was in the audience and I realized there's something going on here. I can't get in front of an audience. I can't speak. My mouth goes dry. I have a message. I have a story I need to tell. There was a woman, much like Emily, and she has a PowerPoint. And like nothing, it just flows out of her. And I'm in the audience, and I raise my hand. What? How do you do that? How do you just tell your story like that, like it's nothing? And she says, Toastmasters. What? What's Toastmasters? I said to her, look it up on the internet. And I did it. And I went to a Toastmasters meeting. And there was a woman there and she said to me, you're doing a table topic. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not doing a table topic, not getting up there. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, my table topic. What's most important to you in your life? Oh, be brave. Be very brave. And I didn't. I didn't join that night. It took me a couple more months to go back. Be brave. But I did go back. But I reminded myself that this was important to me. I have gained confidence. I can come here tonight and tell you my message. I have gained leadership. I have gained the ability to let you know what Sandra is all about. And that's what Toastmasters is about. Be brave. Be very brave. You all have stories and messages that we want to hear. And we're here to let you tell them. So be brave. Be very brave, <laughs> Madam Toastmasters. Yeah. I need water. <laughs> what a perfect way to move us into the next they want to answer, not the one that's asked. You are welcome to do that. Use up your time as you can. And with that, please welcome Alan Sabo. Yeah, Alan. Thank you, Emily. I'm going to move this back over here for a couple of reasons. One is so that I can have a place to put my paper, my documents, and also this is a great place if you are in, in, inside, if you are a little not brave, this is a great hiding spot. It's not the best hiding spot in the world, but it has worked many a time for me. <laughs> Table topics is what many Toastmasters consider the fun part of the meeting. Basically, I am going to ask a question of a general nature, absolutely no right or wrong answer. And you are going to have one to two minutes 
to think up a response to that question. Like Emily said, you are under no obligation to answer that question. If there was a previous question that was asked that you wish you really wanted to answer, you can go ahead and answer it. If there is something that is on your mind, if there's something just eating away at you, you could basically pivot and just start talking about that topic. The goal again is to speak for one to two minutes. And I challenge you, especially the fighters in the room, you're going to be grappling for a minute. When you, when you reach that one minute mark, our timer is going to hold up the green card. At one and a half minutes, you're going to have the yellow card. And at red, at two minutes, you're going to have that red card. Basically, that is the moment where you have really answered the question. So I have a list of questions over here. 365 of them, actually. <laughs> I'm going to ask our prepared speaker if she can give me a number from one, between one and 60, 365. Uh, 12. What would you do differently if you knew nobody would judge you? What would you do differently if you knew nobody would judge you? And I'm going to call a couple of experienced Toastmasters before we really start having fun. So the first person I'm going to call is Mel Garlick. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mel, get him. What would you do differently if you knew nobody would judge you? This is a table topic master, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What would I do differently if I knew so no one was judging me, not watching me? And that's hard because I'm very conscientious. I think about what everyone says and do, and sometimes it affects my decision making. So I wish I had that power to just block out and don't care what anyone thinks about me and just go ahead and move forward. But I'm so concerned about your feelings, this person feelings, I don't even know you. <laughs> but I care about you. I don't know if that comes from Toastmasters or it's just my makeup, but that's who I am. So one of the things I've learned is identify with who you are and come from a true space. And then when I come from a true space and I analyze it, I do too much analyzation. <laughs> and I gravitate to my answer. And so when I think clearly and I look at it and research it, I can put aside what everyone else says and thinks. And sometimes if they're close to you, you have a great conversation with them. And then you, then you can work out the differences. But I care too much. <laughs> I care too much. I love my grandkids, you can see that. And I always talk about it. Every time I talk, I have to mention my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. But that is it. We have to come to consensus to where we are, figure out what we're doing, and what's the best choice for everyone involved and then move forward with that. But can we block who we are? I care about you, son. <laughs> I care about you too, man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Tableton. Yeah. Mel makes it look very easy, and out of everything that he cares about, he definitely cares about Postmasters. Postmasters is a real close family. Mel. I need, a, I need a number between 1 and 365. Two. <laughs> and Mel showed off a, a habit that many people, even in Toastmasters, have a difficulty breaking. And I'm going to ask everybody in this room to listen to the question because you might be next. 
Question number two. Who do you sometimes compare yourself to? Who do you sometimes compare yourself to? I'm going to pick on one more experienced Toastmaster, and that's going to be Lisa Q. Lisa, go get him. Thank you, Mr. Table Topic Master, and thank you, everyone. Who do I always compare myself to? I grew up with two older sisters. They're one year apart. I am six years younger than them. Well, at that time, I compared to them. Now that I like it, but my whole family compare me to my sisters because they are beautiful. They are not just beautiful, they are beautiful that the corner store of the photo studio put their oh. photographs <laughs> at the corner, uh, in the window of their, of their uh, shop. So I am constantly being compared to my sisters. That's how, why I ended here. I want to get away from China because I cannot compete with them. I end up with a lot of habits. I play with boys because I know I'm not pretty. Ended up right now, I think I'm old enough to believe myself. Right now, who do I compare myself to? I said that last year uh, many times at Toastmasters. If you are busy looking at other people, you lose who you are. You lose what you want to accomplish to come to this world and in this life. So why bother? We're all so unique. I might not be more beautiful than my sister, but I have my strength. I'm smarter. <laughs> but that's just an Something that I comfort myself with, but my point is that stop competing, stop comparing, and tr find truly why you are coming here to this life for. Thank you. Yeah. And just so it would break this habit, Lisa, I need a number between 100 and 365. <laughs> 11. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 I am. I, I have the option. 111. Exactly. <laughs> just because people call a number doesn't mean I need to ask that particular question. <laughs> My next question is. What is your greatest challenge? What is your greatest challenge? And let's welcome our past secret Toastmaster and hopefully future Toastmaster, Al. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. All right. What has been and what is my greatest challenge? There's a lot of challenges. The greatest one right now is being able to come up with my greatest challenge. Because <laughs> there's a lot of them. But this right now is the one that I'm faced with. It was, uh, it was a big step opening this office. And um, there was points where I complained to people and I said, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can go out on my own, come to the office by myself and put myself out there really in the, in the face of failure. There were a lot of people that were, uh, were probably doubting me. They said, he's not the biggest he, he, he hasn't sold the biggest houses, he's, he, hasn't, he doesn't have the biggest book of business, but I did believe in myself, I believed that creativity would get me through where other people, other brokerages, other offices came to the table with some really uh, important skill sets that I might have lacked. I 
relied on my training with the Cerro Longo fight team, the people that I surrounded myself with at that gym, and the, the things that they brought to the table that were instilled in me through training with them, I knew that that was something no other brokerage had. There was something that I was able to offer, a, a real team building, a unity that people might think that they have had at other brokerages, but I really believe that when you step in this office and when you are surrounded by the people, the great people at this office, you will see that I'm bringing something else to the table and everything else can be worked on. But I, I thank you all for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> As I think of them, I'm going to offer up some table topics tips. The first tip that I'm going to recommend, especially if you're in the back of the room, this is a great reason to sit in the back of the room, is you can do what I call the slow walk. <laughs> because that's going to give you a lot of extra time to think about what on earth am I going to say. So, Al, I need a, I need a number between 100 and 365. 309. Now we're in business. <laughs> 309. If I gave you $1,000, Actually, let's make it interesting. If I gave you $10,000 and told you that you had to spend it today, what would you buy? If I gave you $10,000 and told you that you had to spend it today, what would you buy? And let us call Mary. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll cut it out. 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 So, so I'm going to give another tip in another moment. But in the meantime, who's the wonderful woman sitting next to them? Okay. One. Yeah, Denise, let's do it. That's why you're my big Nice to meet you. We can't change the topic, right? You can say whatever you want. For <laughs> Anything. Okay. Um, thank you so much, everybody, coming today. I'm going to do my best, and um, here we go. So when I initially heard the question, I said, what I've been putting off is I have to do a brand new bathroom so I could spend $10,000 in about an hour because I have everything picked out that I need. But to be a little bit more creative, um, I'm going to relate it to real estate and being in this office. Um, when Al started his brokerage, my son and daughter-in-law said, you have to work for Al, you have to work for Al. And I said, you know what? I think I would want to work for Al because I kind of gravitate towards people who have a certain energy. And Al is the kind of guy that says, we're doing this, his positive energy and his no-nonsense attitude will get things done. And he opened up a brokerage in a really trying time in real estate. So I said, you know what? If I'm going to make money for anybody, it's going to be for Al. So um, I moved here. And talk about getting out of your comfort zone. Um, Al has me doing these videos. So if I could perfect Toastmasters, I would be so much more relaxed doing these videos. And people tell me, oh, these videos are great, you look great, you come across amazing. Underneath, I'm literally crawling out of my skin. <laughs> so, and, and no joke, like I'm literally crawling out of my skin. And we have a tremendous cameraman, John, that comes and makes me feel very much at ease. But even till this day, when the videos come out, I don't watch them. <laughs> yeah, I, I call my husband up, I go, John, look on Instagram, is that video okay? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and even this, uh, yesterday, John sent me two videos, um, and he looked, walked up to me with a big smile on, and I said, John, I didn't watch them yet. I said, um, 
But I'm getting there. The more I do this, the better I get. Thank you, Toastmasters, for coming. But thank you, Ally Aquenta, for really giving me a next step in life. So. Oh, Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was working out. <laughs> a former Toastmaster once said that was a member of my club that we all get the butterflies in our belly. And right now I'm still a little nervous being up here. But as we do this over and over and over again, the butterflies, they just line up a little bit more. So this is a process, and I thank everybody that comes up here. One thing also that I do in my club that I know is done in some other clubs is we warn everybody at the start of the meeting that you are going to be a part of the meeting, and that is always in table topics. So, Denise, I need a number between 1 and 365. Uh, so I have four boys, so I'm going to say four, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to add a 200 to that. <laughs> Best laid plans. Oh, this is a great question. What do you wish you had done differently? What do you wish you had done differently? And let us call on... Is Charlie here? Charlie! Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Charlie Loughton. I am new at this whole real estate thing. Question was, sir? Can you repeat? Well, I knew you were going to ask me that. But what what would I do different? Yes, thank you. <laughs> my, <laughs> my brain cells are still working a little bit. Um, what would I do differently? Hmm. Haven't really thought about it much. I am 57 years old. I have lived life 57 years. At this point in life, I have achieved majority of the stuff I wanted to achieve in life. There's a few things I still want to achieve. That's why I took up real estate, thanks to Mr. Joe there. He is my guru. <laughs> the whole reason of me joining real estate, I want to be totally financially independent. I am somewhat independent now, but I want to be totally independent. If I would have done things differently, I would have listened to my parents. No jokes. I would have stayed in school. My mom and my dad wanted me to take med school. He wanted to see a doctor in the family, which didn't happen. <laughs> First year in college, sitting down, teacher in front, lecturing. My mind is here in the United States. At that time, you had the movies like Rambo, Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, Chuck Norris, Fancy, and I am here sitting in a third world country behind a table and a chair, wondering what the hell am I doing here. I was the first one out of my family, left, left the house, not knowing where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing. When I came here, I was like, what the hell did I do in my life? <laughs> I should have stayed back. One determination I had, is do I have to succeed before I go back home? Because I don't want to be a zero going back home. Coming back to the question, what would I have done differently? I would have listened to my mom and dad, would have stayed in school, 
their med school would have been in an office with a suit and tie like Mr. Al, <laughs> looking clean, <laughs> no calluses, no black knees. Thank you all. Charlie! <laughs> awesome, brother. I need to let everybody know you don't have to be as raw as that answer was. That was a great, great, honest answer. Thank you for that, Charlie. No, that's my life. Yes, we speak a lot. And Charlie, you have one more task number between one and three sixty-five. Do thirteen. Thirteen. Love it. By the way, who put my name on the case? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my next question is, how do you define success? How do you define success? And since Charlie mentioned uh, him, I'm going to ask for Joe to come up. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, Joe. Awesome. Nice job, Charlie. Good job, I'm going to call you. Not cool. <laughs> We get to go. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Joe. Uh, how do I value success? Success is uh, measured differently by everybody. A lot of people think success is how much money you make. In my world, I don't think that's how you value success. I think success is the people around you, uh, your family, how you bring your children up, watching them succeed, making sure they're better than you. Uh, I don't know why I'm so damn nervous. <laughs> Great, Take a breath. Take a breath. Um, just speak from inside. I'm trying to. <laughs> I just spoke about this with John last week. <laughs> no, just speak from inside. There was no nerves when we were in the car together. <laughs> but uh, now people, uh, I'm going to go back on that. People definitely look at what people have and they think that they're successful, but you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Uh, money can't buy you happiness. So, a story. I know a guy that's, that made millions of dollars, and he would look at somebody like myself and say, you're more successful than me. But this is a person that had a son and lost him, who learned too late in life that you should be there for that rather than chasing money or you know becoming what you think is successful and then you realize later on in life that that's not true success I don't know <laughs> I think I'm done <laughs> yeah, Joe. I promise I'm not going to be mean <laughs> All right, thank you, Sandra, for coming here to give us such an inspiring speech. First, she did really well. She came to the stage. She moved away this podium because she wants to connect. There will be nothing in between her and her audience. And then she started with picturing this a burning house where we all gravitated by what she's going to go, what she's going to say. She painted the picture of the firefighter, the war hose, and then the soldier, and then the, her own sister and her, her struggle. We don't know where she's going, but she's a great storyteller. She painted us every picture of in the desert with the soldier and camouflage off it. And we as if we were there. She's also a really good puzzle player. We didn't know all of these unrelated events and pictures 
and she pulled them up all together, all these pieces towards the fear of public speaking and her own experience six years ago, I think. And now it all makes sense towards the end. Ah, I, we all got it. That is so, a, a great speaker do is that first, she wants to connect with the audience, and second is that she's a great storyteller. She does really well also by repetitive about the title of the speech, Be Brave, Be Very Brave. She said that a couple of times throughout the speech, even at the end, you might forget about Sandra Albanese as a person, but I'm pretty sure we all remember, be brave, be very brave. As any great speeches, there are always a space to improve. I would like to give Sandra three points so she can take this speech even better. Now, the first is that the Toastmaster part, that story, came in a little bit too late at the speech. I think it's almost at five minutes. Uh, she has a five to seven minutes, but I would like to speed up a little bit about all those laid out and paving up towards the Toastmasters. Let's be honest, we're here to sell Toastmasters. We're not going to shy to be shy about that. And we are here to sell Toastmasters. I would like you to go deeper about Toastmasters, how scared you were, and they ask you to talk about table topics, and you are like, just like Emily said, I just give seven, seven words. That's my answer. I couldn't came up with anything. I would like to hear that. I would like to see the room. I would like to see how scared you were. And the second thing is that um, ask your audience questions. The heroes you're talking about, the firefighters, the soldiers, and ask them, what is your hero? These are the fighters. Are you got stage fright? and when you are froze. So that is even more related to your audience. Lastly, the ending. The ending, if you can use a little bit repetitive, it's even better. Tell your stories, make your voice heard, and let, it stay, let the world know who you are. I think three repetitive and get we all um, inspired and even more and even something that we can take away. Join Toastmasters, tell your story. Join Toastmasters, make your voice heard and something like that's even better. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Lisa. You. We talked about judgment earlier and feeling judged by other people and the magic of Toastmasters is that this is an evaluation. This is someone who sees a way for you to be even better than you see yourself being. So they're coaching you towards that end goal. So it's not judgment, it's helpful. It's, it's someone who believes in you. With that, we are going to hear from our awe counter and grammarian, Melvin Garlic, next. Well, good afternoon once again, Toastmasters and guests. And here is my Grammarian report. I want to say I heard the word of the day gravitate by three individuals. Denise in the back, I guess. Yeah, Denise. And Lisa used it. And Lisa used it. Thank you. And the idea of using the word of the day so we can incorporate it in, in our speech and just identify it just strengthens our ability to improv. So, word uses. I didn't hear too much improper usage. I, I want to point out one in a little while. But Sandra, I loved when you said, picture, picture with me. And so you brought the audience in. And that was a good statement or phrase to use for your speech. And, I, and it, it resonated also. And also, a twinkling Christmas tree. So also, you painted a picture. You painted beautiful pictures throughout your speech. And those are two that stuck out with me really quickly. Lisa, when you got up and did your table topic, I said something about the other one. I won't say it this time, but you made a, you made a statement. When you look 
at what others say, you, you lose who you are. So if you pay too much attention to what others say, you kind of give up who you are. And so you have to know who you are. So it was a good statement that resonated with us and it painted a picture as well. Al, a real team building program. So <laughs> you incorporate the, the real estate in here. Denise, I love the way you use getting out of your comfort zone. Very important and giving me the next step in life. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> he is my guru. Yeah. Al is my guru. I love that. It talk about you, it, 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 it expressed, that phrase said so much about your relationship with Al and what he meant to you. Joseph, I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> we all are nervous and you know what part of the time we didn't know a lot of times the audience doesn't know you're nervous up here so you don't need to tell us that no I know <laughs> <laughs> just wasted time <laughs> Jacob a phrase that somebody may have to ask you what it, what it meant veg out with my family <laughs> I knew that because I have young kids. <laughs> Pony. Boy, you were just, you were very comfortable up here. Very comfortable. I can tell that you are an individual in front of the cameras all the time. You're ready to move to that next level. You have to invite me to your next fight so I can see. <laughs> so I, I'm Pony when I was a kid and I'm still Pony now. So you're comfortable with who you are, and that was present throughout your whole presentation up here. And that, that statement is important. Just craft that into everything you say, and you can build yourself. So word fillers. Puni, three arms, three R's, and two you know. And so just, just pause. You don't even know that you're doing that, but just when you... Don't know what you're going to say, stop, pause, think about it, and also adds more impact to what you're saying. Jacob, you know, one R, three arms. Joseph, two arms, two R's, and others. Charlie, no arms and R's, but two very expressive words that I think you could use differently and not incorporate it in your speech. Denise in the back, guess what? Are the words? Uh, <laughs> no. uh, I think everyone heard it. No. What are the words? Uh, I'm serious. Hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Denise, you use three, you use five, well, actually six ums. Al, four us and one um. Lisa, two us and two one um. Sandra, you was perfect. <laughs> wow, Sandra. Yes, Sandra. <laughs> so that is my R counter in Premier Report. Thank you. But I didn't do a table topic. Okay. That's true. <laughs> it was a prepared speech. It was a prepared speech. You have to write. Still well done. Caveat. <laughs> and our final. Watch, what we call watchtowers. We're going to hear from our timer, Denise. Okay, timing report. Sandra's speech was to be five to seven minutes. It was six minutes and 18 seconds. Table topics. We have a lot of competitors in this room. Just so that you know, we do have contest seasons in Toastmasters where we have, there are different categories depending on what the district decides to compete in. This, uh, right now we're doing humorous speeches and we're doing table topics speech contests. So if you were in a table topics contest, you would have to have spoken at least minute. a minute and no more than two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, one person went over, but I do have to tell you that I, had, I don't think I've ever been in 
a demonstration meeting like this before where every single person who came up here spoke for at least two minutes. So you are really fantastic. I mean, we all figured people have to be for like 20 seconds. So excellent. Um, Mel, two minutes, four seconds. Lisa, two minutes, seven seconds. Al, two minutes, 13 seconds. Denise, two minutes, 14 seconds. Charlie, two minutes, 56 seconds. Joe, two minutes, six seconds. Jake, two minutes, four seconds, and Pumi, two minutes. Wow. Evaluator Lisa would have been disqualified. <laughs> two to three minutes, she spoke for four minutes and 13 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. You've gotten a taste of Toastmasters, I think, positive, good so far. Yeah. We've enjoyed being here. We did leave some room at the end for Q&A. I don't know, Al, if you want to come up here, if we just want to mingle and offer. Yeah, I mean, we could just kind of hang out and, yeah, yeah, right? I think at this point, we're, we're looking for whether there is enough interest to charter a group, if there's a minimum of 20 people who want to move forward with this, that is where we would be able to charter a club. We know there is more interest in Wanta and beyond. Oh, absolutely. There's definitely yeah. a lot of opportunity here. We really want to bring a community club here. Yeah, we're, we're going to we'll talk to everybody. We'll try to lock down a, a time to, to do this, you know. And so with um, the more the longer speeches, yeah. would that be someone prepares one of our, like our group, one yeah. person yes, will prepare? You guys and, will be speaking <laughs> and preparing your speeches. You yeah. could have one to two speeches per session. It could be up to four speeches. If you didn't have any prepared speeches done, you could just do table topics until you get to that point. You could even watch some of our championship speeches and give feedback among yourselves of what they did well. There, yeah. there are options if you don't have someone available to speak. We can also supply guest speakers. No, no, we want to we want to get we want to get up there. We got to get right. everyone up there. Good. I think it'd be a good opportunity to do speak on certain topics in real estate or even pull me rattle off a promo man <laughs> you know thank you, thank you. everybody uh, starts with an icebreaker yeah yeah everybody starts with an icebreaker so. yeah you'll ease into the five to seven minute speeches you can start with four minutes you guys that would be two table topics basically because you guys are already at two minutes awesome thank you everybody this is great really cool thank you for the, to the toastmasters yes really good be into it right now feels like they would be interested in in, in, in a club. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 There in the back there. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and please pass it around. Anyone who you think would like this, and yep. tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Yeah. We'll do. Great. Awesome. Thank you. We got coffee, we got water, hang out. Let's start selling some houses. Let's go. <laughs>